Upon the shores of Lake Taupo within New Zealand is an intriguing as yet unexplained artifact that has become known as the Kaimanawa Wall. What is interesting regarding the Kaimanawa Wall is the fact that it clearly predates academia's rigidly attested view of the past inhabitations of the country. New Zealand is largely accepted to have first been inhabited within the last 800 years. However, the analysis that has been done on this mysterious wall has shown that it is, at very minimum, 2,000 years old. Additionally, it clearly displays the telltale construction qualities of a lost knowledge, evidently within countless other ruins found all over the world. The controversial wall first came to public attention during the early 1990s, with a publication by Barry Brailfords in the New Zealand Listener called Megalith Mystery Are Giant Stones in the Kaimanawa Forest Park, Evidence of an Ancient New Zealand Culture? Within, he details how analysis has shown that the stone wall is at least two millennia old and was created by previous unknown settlers within New Zealand. He called them the Waitaha and postulated that they were subsequently exterminated by the Maoris who arrived only 800 years ago. Furthermore, Brailsford maintains that the wall could link New Zealand with Egypt, South America, and many other ancient civilizations, continuing to list 12 pieces of evidence to support his claims. Predictably, however, individuals within many different fields of academia have leapt to the defense of currently upheld paradigms. The Department of Conservation, archaeologists, geologists, and just about every political party in New Zealand including a number of media outlets, directed tremendous hostility toward the claims, leading to the site being completely shut off to the public. You have to wonder, what are they so scared of people finding? Regardless of Brailford's evidence, a conclusion that the wall is nothing but a mere natural formation has been publicly peddled ever since the publication nearly 30 years ago. A conclusion in staunch denial of reality or evidence. The conclusion made by official geologists was that the wall is an outcrop of a large ignimbrite, a natural formation created about 330,000 years ago. They claimed that the block shapes were produced by fractures in the rock, attributed to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other natural events. It seems scholars are quite happy to date such sites, but extremely reluctant to attribute any intelligent design within their creation. Could the Kaimanawa Wall really be a 330,000-year-old man-made wall? A wall built by the same people as many other sites found across the world? We find such possibilities highly compelling. There are many ways to create a misleading, coercive conspiracy. Yet nearly all good stories, even when mostly fictional, to upstand some level of scrutiny must contain that which is known as the kernel of truth. And these kernels can be found throughout the mountains of ancient stories, belief systems, rituals, and medicines worldwide. Found throughout ancient texts, however, interestingly, there are countless accounts of a great deluge. However, modern curriculums are not about finding the truth within these writings, but a form of conformity we not only feel that the evidence for a flood worldwide exists, but that the pre-flood civilizations who lived through this event, claimed as secluded, primitive, small settlements, didn't venture far until a much later academically claimed dating. Regardless of this, we are now slowly exposing the truth regarding said events. Modern technologies, such as ground-penetrating radar, are now being utilized more and more. Many of these studies are finding mega-metropolises, often now resting beneath and amongst dense forests, having been revealed via this technology to have been not individual settlements, but one enormous city, some with estimated populations of 10 million people or more, facts which are in staunch opposition to modern dating paradigms. Along with ours and many others' personal, in-depth research into the technologies and knowledge of the creators and later re-inhabitants of such sites, have also been proven beyond doubt to have once had shared knowledge. Unquestionably made by people who were in global communication, endless examples of tools, masonry techniques, and artifacts 
are often found to have all been crafted in the same ways, with matching scars found at quarries and upon megaliths worldwide. Yet these quarries, again, bring us back to our original message, that of a shared experience of catastrophe, also one of which being the Great Flood. Maybe these groups worked on huge weather-resistant stones as an attempt to face off against such enormous natural forces. Yet it would seem, although they left their mark on the globe, as our research would suggest were in vain, as they were seemingly wiped out in an instant, with many sites abandoned mid-flow during one of these events. Interestingly, not only would the evidence suggest a sudden disappearance of those responsible for many of the most extraordinary megalithic ruins, there have also been remnants found and documented within mainstream funded study, which is not only indicative of a prior knowledge of this possible swelling of the seas, but an immense effort attempted to build fortresses to protect against such an event, dated as 7,000 years old. From an article titled, quote, This 7,000-year-old wall was the earliest known defense against rising seas. Lizzie Wade states, and I quote, About 7,000 years ago, seas were rising all over the world. Ice Age glaciers were melting, and the ocean crept up shorelines and toward people's homes on every inhabited continent. Now, archaeologists have discovered the earliest known defense against those rising seas a 7,000-year-old seawall built to protect a farming village from worsening storm surges and encroaching saltwater from the Mediterranean Sea. Ultimately, however, the wall failed. It now lies drowned off the coast of Israel, along with the rest of the settlement it was meant to protect." End quote. Additionally, Amy Gusick, an archaeologist at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles, California, who studied this period around California's Channel Islands, stated, and I quote, All the different kinds of responses we see towards sea level rise 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 years ago, we're still seeing all of those same responses today. Discoveries such as these, not only proof of our ancient ancestors' awareness in regards to the possible dangers of rising sea levels, but supports the argument that human contributions are not as catastrophic as are currently believed by some to be. The questions regarding their origins, however, who was once responsible for such remarkable efforts, remains a mystery, one which we are determined to solve. It is a journey of discovery which we find highly compelling. When within this modern world of academic study, a ruin is found, a ruin of such astonishing feature or size, one which is clearly an out-of-place artifact within the realm of its accompanying modern paradigm. No matter how amazing, how historically important, due to its sheer inexplicability, one will rarely hear about it in popular debate. And one such ruin is Kat Shibib. The archaeological site was first identified by British diplomat Sir Alec Kirkbride in 1948, an ancient wall over 93 miles long, whose origins are predictably unknown. Ever since its initial discovery, a range of disciplines, including archaeologists, scientists, and anthropologists have studied the wall. Yet the date of the Khat Shabib's construction, however, is still claimed as unknown, regardless of it also being claimed as, quote, widely debated by archaeologists. Regardless of this claim, many will have never heard of this spectacular ancient ruin, a reality we claim not by coincidence, but design. Recent study of the wall by the Aerial Archaeology and Jordan Project have found that it runs north-northeast, south-southwest, spanning a total unbroken distance of 66 miles. However, they also discovered sections where two run parallel, this for an additional substantial distance. Quote, if we add the spurs and stretches of parallel wall, the total length would be about 150 kilometers or 93 miles, wrote David Kennedy, a professor at the University of Western Australia, and Rebecca Banks, a research assistant at Oxford University, 
in a paper published recently in the journal Zeitschrift for Orient Archaeology. It is unquestionably a remarkable ancient ruin, one evident of a once highly capable, yet now lost, civilization. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling. Rued Island holds an astonishing ancient secret. Located within the Mediterranean, it is the only inhabited island within Syria and we believe was once an awe-inspiring fortress. Having once been protected on all sides, although very little of the wall remains, what is still in existence demonstrates an incredible past civilization's prowess. Like with so many other ancient sites around the world, it was constructed using enormous megalithic blocks, once somehow masterfully placed atop one another. It is unknown whether this wall was created from fear of the seas or possible invaders, but this gigantic wall once enclosed the island completely. Known to the Greeks as Arados, it was renamed Ruad or Aruad by the Templars during the Crusades. How did this ancient civilization complete such structures? There have been numerous individuals of late attempting to explain away many of these enormous megalithic walls and buildings, such as the temples within Baalbek as mere Roman architecture. However, just like the academics they parrot, they conveniently have no logical idea as to how this was done. Relying solely on modern drawings of these events rather than any form of demonstration. As we have mentioned on many occasions, it would be a logical strategy to not only adopt such awe-inspiring works of architecture as their own, but also to steal techniques these civilizations would have been capable of and claim them as their invention such as Roman roads, Roman columns, etc. There are many buildings on our Earth that are, we agree, undoubtedly 2,000 years old. Not only are their constructions documented at length, but their condition also reflects this age. However, with ruins such as the Baalbek temples, and indeed the Wall of Ruad, their condition, along with the inexplicable nature of their construction, is not only indicative of lost knowledge, but subsequently evade current explanation. This reality persists no matter how hard some try to explain them away as more modern achievements. Yangshan Quarry, Gornea Shoria, the Pregnant Woman, the Colossi of Menman, the list goes on. All these ancient builds incorporate blocks well into the thousands of tons with countless more lost to history. How these structures were built is a mystery, yet if they were indeed completed by our own more modern ancestors, why is this knowledge lost to the eons? Why did these civilizations not continue these miraculous feats of engineering? Why were these supposed capable civilizations not building impenetrable fortresses to protect their flourishing civilizations from possible invaders using these same techniques? We will continue to argue, and we feel, with good reason, that academia, along with many other suspicious individuals, are selling you a fallacy, not only to appear all-knowing, but also to conceal that which they do not understand. Who built the Wall of Ruad, or indeed the many other sites we so often cover? The history of the Earth is yet to be fully unraveled. It is a tale some find highly challenging. Nix was at one time the official meeting place of the Athenian Democratic Assembly of Ancient Greece. In the earliest days of Athenian democracy, the ecclesia met in the agora. However, sometime within the early 5th century, the meeting place was moved to a new meeting place, which came to be called Nix, from the Greek word meaning tightly packed together. This word, we feel, was more than likely inspired by the astonishing polygonal masonry, so often conveniently absent any of academia explanations as to the origins of such sites. How can individuals tasked with establishing an accurate understanding as to the origins of such sites seemingly overlook that which cannot be explained? It is clear to us that a conspiracy 
has befallen the academically established historical timeline of our species. This in favor of a perceived all-knowing rather than that which they truly are, rather out of their depth. The Nyx Wall being one of the most compelling and enigmatic features of the ancient ruin. Polygonal masonry of extraordinary size, with a construction method indicative of a lost technology and thus lost civilization. Excavations at the site began in 1910 by the Greek Archaeological Society, which definitely confirmed the site as the Nyx. Interestingly, on the western end of the site is an ancient astronomical observatory. However, during the Greeks' inhabitancy, the site was the focus of political discussion, not astronomy. These discussions were held every nine days and required the involvement of no less than 6,000 residents of Athens, although it is thought that the site could actually hold more than 20,000 individuals. Who built Nyx? or indeed the inexplicable polygonal masonry present in its boundary walls, with blocks similar in size to that of the fortress of Sacsayhuaman. The question is, why has this site seemingly been overlooked, not only by academia, but missed by the majority of alternative research? This absence of research, we feel, is clear proof of academia's efficiency to stifle free thought. We suspect that their motives focus on protecting investments, to retain book sales in regards to their apparent accurate explanations of the Greeks and Romans. This requires the concealment of anything which contradicts this tale of events, concealing features which would inevitably ignite unanswerable questions within the viewer's mind. It is undoubtedly an astonishing wall, surrounding an equally astonishing ruin, a place we find highly compelling. There are countless ancient sites found all over the planet that are not only far older than current academically claimed by individuals funded to come up with specifically permitted dates for their creation, selling one's integrity in favor of financial securities and an authoritative position within society, offered to them in return for their obedient deceits, like a mule guided by a carrot these individuals not only fear losing such reputations and handsome incomes if one were to tell the truthful story regarding said sites, but they unquestionably turn a blind eye to the many areas that I cover, which are often not only implausible to state where the work of the particular permitted re-inhabitants placed much closer to us within history, but to suggest that such ancestors were capable of said feats is simply a preposterous claim they often knowingly and deliberately overlook such features, due to their lack of any plausible explanation for such accomplishments. As such, with many ancient sites simply ignored or are disguised as closed book cases, with a dull, deliberately disinteresting tale of origin. These academics have some of the most intimate access to these ruins, yet deny the world's population a true account of said relics. For to suggest that a civilization less advanced than us accomplished the placement of megaliths far into the thousands of tons precisely atop one another with awe-inspiring stonework details and polygonal brickwork seemingly created like a puzzle of unique pieces, among many other baffling features, I feel is a proof of a deliberate agenda-driven conspiracy concealing said site's true origins. These unexplainable anomalies, the main reason why said individuals perceive me as a threat, not only to their funding, but also their positions of trusted authority within modern society. For the truths I tell, due to the inexplicable nature of their existence and their lack of exposure within academic studies, expose the field as a funded organized group of deceivers. These features are simply impossible for them to explain. Yet they continue to claim that they were built by people who were undeniably incapable of such feats. This is why many unexplainable artifacts simply vanish, and why many ancient sites are not only brushed under the proverbial carpet, but said features overlooked, ignored, and not mentioned at all. And our next relic is no exception. Many people have heard of the Great Wall of China one of the only ancient ruins which is so large it can be seen from space, 
a very famous wall. Yet an even greater number of people are unaware of another great wall which can be found within India. Successfully overlooked by modern historians and antiquarians alike, this wall, known as the Kumpalgar, has been claimed to be merely a recently created ruin. Yet I feel, just like the many other ancient ruins found around the globe, is far older than currently claimed. It is of an astonishing size. And a number of alternative so-called fringe researchers, which academics like to derogatorily call them, have found substantial evidence that not only is the upper layers far older than claimed, but the entire wall sits upon a foundation immensely older than the wall we see today. A foundation that many have concluded is so old that it had simply turned to dust through the eons, rebuilt at a currently unknown time within antiquity. The wall stretches an astonishing 22 miles, and once protected hundreds of extremely ancient dwellings, and measured at over 40 feet thick, to suggest that such a feat could have been accomplished by our more recent ancestors, who the founders of mainstream academia permits, is a tough posit to agree with. For if such claim were true, why is the wall seemingly ignored by modern history? I feel the reason the wall has been successfully kept largely unknown is due to the fact that if openly studied and widely known of, more people would research such site, eventually realizing, like many before them, that the wall is far older than currently claimed and possesses such enormous amounts of stone along with an immensely older foundation that current claims of its origins and age are simply incorrect, and a clear attempt to shrug off this astonishing structure as a reasonably modern creation which they hope will not be looked at closely. An attempt to close the book on a possible antediluvian ruin, which many people as a result told with a dull deceptive history for its existence, which not only stifles one's interest regarding the wall's origin, but deters the curious from ever investigating the wall's truly astonishing nature. A motivation which I feel is the main driving force behind its lack of public exposure. Who rebuilt the Great Wall of India? How old is its far older, highly eroded foundation? The Great Wall of India was an astonishing feat of ancient engineering, a feat that academia would prefer stay largely unknown. A reality which I find highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.